So here we are in the second part of the fifth section and today we will take a look at raycasting, finish up our project and also explore why MC script is redundant. I hope you have fun and learned something. Let's start. So in this click file we now want to test raycasting. And raycasting is just the term that means to select things that you are looking at. So we can just use Raycast here. If you have the Visual Studio Code add-on installed, you also have this snippet here and it goes in these squirrely braces here. And in here we can insert a, an operation that should be applied to the block that we are looking at. So we can, for example, set block the current position to stone. So now that we reloaded this, we can now click anywhere and it turns into this stone here. Initially I prepared a fancy animation for this, but now we have to take a look at the documentation here to discover the ray casting more. So like you can see here, this looks a bit more complicated than that what we used, because you can actually insert options here. And these options are all optional, you can also see that here. And the first option is the maximum distance. By default, this is set to 100 blocks. As section, second option, separated with a comma. You can set the block or the block tag to travel through. So you have to imagine there is a ray sent from the player's position into the direction the player is looking. And with this block option here, you can just say which blocks are solid and which are not. And as third option, you can set either entity or block, and that will be the target. For example, you choose the entity mode and check for a pick. Then only if you're looking at a pick directly, this will trigger. And you can set what will trigger in this block here. And here you can insert commands or other com components of the M script language. And optionally you can insert a comma and another squarely braces block. And you can execute stuff for every step. So this ray is not in instantly at the position, but it actually steps through all the positions until it hits a block. And here you can do for example particles. Down here there are also the defaults for the block and the target. So like you can see in Minecraft, this hits any, any block in the game. So then let us upgrade this ray casting a bit more. And we say for every step, that's the second block here, we want to display a particle, but also not on the entire world, but just in a range of five blocks. So we say if at S is at a distance, five blocks or more, and then we can display a particle. So in that way, we don't just block the view of the player. So now if we shoot a bit further, you can see this, you can see this ray a bit more and you can see how it works. How does this help to move a platform? Well, we could just ray cast to the entity, that's the platform and move it a bit. But we also want it just on this line here. That means we have to detect some way if the entity is on this line and you click on it with the carrot on a stick. This is quite tricky, but I had an idea. What if we take just some glass blocks, like gray stained glass, and hide it under the ground here, just like that. And if we click this carrot on a stick here, we just check every time if this glass block is at this certain height here, if it is, and the ent entity is also near, we can move that entity. If this sounds a bit odd to you, yes it is, but once we implement it, it will be a bit more clear. So our glass blocks are at the height 54, and we can just check every step of this ray casting. If there is a block at the current position, but at the height of 54 blocks. So just gray stained glass here. And if we take a look at the generated functions a bit, 
we can see that this works with the MC script stop tag. And this is and this is basically a way to say if the NG has this tag, the way casting is complete and we'll execute this part up here. So we can just simulate this hit by adding this tag manually. So we just say tag at s add MC script stop. So in that way we should not be able to shoot over the glass. So now let's see if you aim at this invisible wall now with the glass blocks down there. We can see it stops right there. And it's like a wall that we can paint on. And it's also pretty dynamic because we can change these blocks down here and it will change the hit area. But we don't want to place blocks there. We want to move a platform. And to implement this platform, you have to be a bit creative for that. Of course, with resource packs and models, you can do much more. But I picked a boat for it because a boat actually has a hitbox to stand on. To give it a bit more flat space, I included some passengers. So there are just like two static turtles in there to, to give it a platform. I would say let's create a new script to summon this entity. Summon.mc script trigger this manually. So no need for some interaction here. But we want to align it, so we just use align x, y, and z and then just copy our command in here. So let's ex execute our command at this position. And yes, it was pushed into the corner a bit. So let's change that quickly by adding 0 0.5. And now if we run it again, we can see it is perfectly centered and we can just stand on it. This would be perfect for a two player game where the one controls this platform and the other stands on the platform and gets moved by the other player. But let's implement the technique to move this boat here. Therefore, therefore I have given the boat a special tag, target, so we can select it in here more easily. And the easiest thing would probably be to just check for the entity. So for example, S at E with the tag of target at a distance two blocks and then we can just tp that entity to the current location where the gray cost hit and yes kind of works but it also works vertically and we don't really want it of course this is a simple solution you can totally do that but because we are using TP as well. This is limited to 20 frames a second, so it's pretty unsmooth. And we also want to work with a bit of NBT data as well. So let's use the motion NBT data for that. At first, we have to define two scoreboards for at E tag equals target, and the same for the Z axis. And then, and then we have to test for all directions of our hit point, like we did that with our pink wall. So let's remove that here. And we want to see if our boat is in that direction. And depending on how far it is from our hit point, we want to increase the motion so that the boat in the end moves. Let's do that for the X axis first. X. And we also want to position it 0 0.5, so right in the middle, at the same height, and 0 0.7 to give it a bit more room. Because we have the x-axis, we want to modify the z-axis on there. So at E, which has the tag of target, and is in a distance of 0 0.6 or lower, because we used the 0 0.7 up here. And we just want to increase it by one. And this has to be done for all four directions. I will, I will do that quickly, we'll see it in a second. So here it is, aligned to the x-axis and moved in the z-axis, positive and negative, and the same for the x-axis here, where we modify the motion x. So now we have a new 
motion value in the scoreboard here. And now we want to save it into the entity. That means we select the entity again, at E tag equals target at a distance of minimum five blocks. And then we want to execute store the result into an entity at S in this case and the motion zero. This is a double and we also scale it a bit down. And then we just run forward players get, which you can't see at the moment, but it's there. And the same goes for the one motion, but we have to change this obviously to Z right here. So this would be it for the code. Again, what we do, we send out a ray. The ray goes from the player to the block that the player is looking at. And for each step between that, we show this flame particle. And if there is somewhere a gray star stained glass at the height of 54, we stop the ray casting and it enters this block here where we modify the motion of the boat if it is at a specific distance. So let's test that with a brand new entity and we will take our carrot on a stick. And here we can now see if we aim at it, it moves slightly and a lot smoother than the other variant. And that way we can control this platform right here. So this would be it for this course right here. Of course, there are so many more things in MC Script to explore, but I think you understood the basics, but there will be no other sections because I actually focused on another thing. Maybe you have noticed this throughout the course, but MC Script is at some parts a bit buggy and the syntax is not really clear. For example, for this ray casting, you have this row of arguments of options there and you can't really tell what is what. And if you take a look at the generated result here, you can also see there is much repetition here and this is not really performant. I have decided to recode a script from scratch also in another program language and also in another way that is, at least for me, more efficient and much easier to un understand. And this is not a new programming language, but it is a framework that builds up from one program language, in my case, Dart. And Object D had, has at least as many features as MC Script and even more in the future because you can extend it and build it modular. What I really missed on MC Script. I hope you still follow both of these projects here. As said, the focus is more on Object D now. Maybe I will port this entire project that we did in this course to Object D and show you how to work with that properly. Till then, you can take a look at the course playlist again. If you still want to work with MC Script, the documentation is always online and also accessible in the description below and also watch a bunch of new Object D videos that ex explain it in detail. This was it for this MC Script course. I hope you liked it. We'll see us soon.